Hello, YouTube programming video consumers. Today we are in the next episode of the Project Euler Archive series, solving problem number 17, number letter counts. If the numbers 1 to 5 are written out in words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 4 equal to 19 letters used in total. If all of the numbers from 1 to 1,000, inclusive, were written out in words, how many letters would be used? All right, so this problem, it's not a very complicated problem. It's just going to be a little tedious in how we solve it. Um, so first things first, we need a function to return the spelling of a given number. And then we can do that for all of the numbers from 1 to 1,000 and get our answer. So I've already done a little uh, pre-work here just to save you the time of me typing this out. It's very boring. But basically, we're going to have this function, numspelled. It's going to take in a number as an integer, and it's going to return an integer representing the number of letters used to spell that number. So if we ran numspelled of 1, I would like to get 3. If we ran numspelled of 11, I would get 6, and so on. OK, so this dictionary D, what this is is just a mapping of a number to its spelling. And I just identified these numbers as the basic fundamental numbers that all other numbers are built upon. So I have the numbers 1 through 20 because they're all unique. And then after 20, you know, you get 21. That's a combination of 20 and 1. And you know, all of the numbers can be made of a combination from 1 to 1,000 of anything in this dictionary. So that's the numbers 1 to 20, and then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then the special case 1,000. So first things first, if uh, the given num is in the dictionary, that means it's already hard-coded in here, we can just return uh, the length of d at num. Um, actually, for now, I'm just going to return the actual thing, so d at num, for debugging purposes, and then at the end, we'll change it. But for now, uh, it's going to return d at num. So if I input 60, it'll return this string 60. OK. Now let's, uh, let's design this algorithm here. So as an example, they use the example 342. So our function takes in an input 342. What will make it easier for us is if we convert this into array form so we can iterate through each of the digits. So I want 342 to become something like 342 as an array. So I'll do that right now. Array equals it's empty. And then for, uh, no, while num is greater than 0, this is how I, I've done this before when you turn take an integer and put it into an array form of its digits. So yeah, while num is greater than 0, Array dot insert at the beginning num mod ten. This is the last digit, and then num divide equals ten. Okay, so that's how you do that. Okay, and now we're left with this. So how would we write three forty two? Um, how would we make a function to output three forty two as you know the words three hundred and forty two? Well, first thing you have to identify the magnitude of the current digit. So in this example, 3 is in the hundreds place. So since it's in the hundreds place, we first write the value of the digit, so 3. And then you have to write the word 100. And then you have to write the word and. OK, so for all, for anything in the hundreds column, this is what you do. You write the value of that digit, and then the word 100, and then the word and. OK, so I'll do that now um, for i in range len of array, uh, we will we'll say the current digit equals array at i. And then if, hmm, if len of array, so in this situation that would be 3, if the length of the array minus i equals 0, that means that we're in the hundreds column, right? Because if the length of the array is 3, sorry, this should be 3. If the length of the array is 3 minus i equals 0, equals 3, that means this is the hundreds column. Also, elif, by the same logic, if len of array minus i equals 2, then this means that this is the tens column. And then else, uh, we must be in the ones column. OK. Um, also, before I do any more stuff, um, we just have to check if digit equals 0. Because if digit equals 0, there's no mapping for 0. I only have the num numbers 1 to 9. Um, and if it's 0, we just can continue, because you don't, you don't say 0 when you're t saying the number. So continue. OK, so for the hundreds place, um, so we're in the hundreds column. Oh yeah, we need to have some list to keep track of our results. So I'll just call it um, output. 
Okay. Output. So we're in the hundreds column. Output dot append, right? So if the if digit is three, I want to output D at three. So append um, D at digit. Okay. And then we also want to append, we could just append the string hundred and we don't need to care about spaces because at the end of the day we're just counting letters. Okay, so that's for the hundreds column. Then for the tens column, um, the tens column is a bit tricky because the tens, if the, the, the way we treat the number is different depending on what the tens digit is. So like in the easiest situation, if digit is greater or equal to two, so you know 20, 30, 40, we just simply output this string, you know, this corresponding string. So if digit is greater or equal to two, then output dot append not d at digit, because digit is a single digit number, it will be d at digit times 10. So if the tens digit, digit is two, we output dot append d at 20, or 30, or 40, or, and so on. Okay, l if digit, it could be one. So if digit equals one, that, that means uh, it's gonna be a t number. So for example, 110, 111, 114. So um, if we know that it's gonna be one of those t numbers, um, we can just, so the number, the number we would care about is digit times 10. I suppose digit equals one, so it's just gonna be 10 anyway. So that's a, just a waste of, uh, that just complicates things. So it's gonna be 10 plus array at i plus one. Yeah, so let's say this was 312 like this. We would get to this section of the code uh, where we're dealing with the tens column and then digit equals one. So then the number we care about, I'll just say temp, equals 10, I wanna say 10 plus two to get the result of 12. So 10 plus array at i plus one, that would give me 12. And then I wanna output dot append d at temp. Yeah. Okay, if that looks right. And then there's also the situation where it's zero, but I suppose it can't be zero because I'm already checking for that here, so then these are the only situation. These are the only things it could be. So I might as well say else here. Okay, and then else the ones column. Yeah, if we're in the ones column, and you know we know that the number can't be zero, we just need to append uh, the string value of that. So append d at digit. Okay, and then yeah, also. Okay, I'm actually gonna separate this into two lines because I just realized that in the situation where the number is exactly a divisible of 100, so 100, 200, 300, um, it's gonna add the word and by accident. That's gonna be a bug. So uh, like it'll be like and. So if the number was exactly 100, our output would be uh, 100 and. So what we need to do is at the end of this for loop, we need to check if output at negative one equals and, and if it is, we just wanna remove that. So output dot pop negative one. Okay, mm. there's a lot going on here. I think this is right. So what I'm gonna do is return output and just check if it's working. So let's see, I'll go for i in range, let's go from one to 120, 121 to include 120. And then I'm gonna print this formatted string. I wanna see i and i also want to see num spelled at i okay let's see what this does python 317.py okay let's see if if we've done this so yeah one this all this stuff works okay and then it's, once you get up to the 20s yeah 21 22 look looks good okay all this stuff looks good yeah you get 100 101 102 Okay, 111 gives 111 one. Okay, so yeah, once we get, if we get to this section in the code where we temp.output d at temp, then we're done, so we can just break. Because what's happening is it's, it's appending 11 and then also appending one. So let's see if that fixed it. Okay, yeah, 101, good, 120. Okay, I think this is working. Okay, so now in act instead of actually appending that, we need to append the length of it. Um, and for this one, it's in an array. We wanna output, okay, so. First, we wanna compress all of those strings from the array into one string, so you can do that with 
the dot join method. So uh, empty string dot join output. Okay, and then of that, that'll give us one long string, and then we want to return the length of that. Okay, um, so let's test that. Let's see um, if I say print num spelled of 342. So according to the example, this should return 23 if we did it correctly. Ooh, it returned 24. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna print it, print output, just to see what the bug is. So it gave us 342, 24. Huh. Oh, I spelled 40 wrong. 40 is just spelled without this U. I think that's the bug. Yeah, it gives us 23. Okay, it was just a typo. And then the other test case, 115 should return 20. So let's see with 115. Great, returns 20. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we'll say total equals zero. And then for i in range one to 1,000 inclusive, total plus equals num spelled of i. And then we print total, and that is the answer. Two one one two four. Nice. That was a bit more complicated. Um, so we, we did get it right. It wasn't like a complicated algorithm question. It was just complicated to keep track of like where we were in the code. But yeah, uh, hopefully that made sense to you guys. I'll see you in the next video.